Hello, this is Dr. Rajkumar Arya and I am going to explain today the heat transfer from a rectangular cooling fin. So this is a schematic of rectangular cooling fin. So this side of the fin is being maintained at temperature TW all the time. Z direction is taken along the length of the fin and this end of the fin is completely insulated so the flux here would be zero so conduction flux would be zero here because this is insulated boundary condition now the width of the fin is w and thickness of the fin is 2b so the heat transfer or you can say the heat loss from the fin will take place from this surface this is the upper surface same thing on bottom surface and this side which is y plane so this plane and this is minus y plane so heat loss will take place from x plane and y plane there is no heat loss from z plane because this side is insulated one so in that case so this fin is being surrounded by some air or surrounding gases which have convective heat transfer coefficient h and the temperature of surrounding air is ta so if we say that heat loss on the surface would be given the q equal to h a delta t so this is a general Newton's law of cooling here, so H A T minus T A T surrounding. Now here, if you see the energy loss uh, from a uh, hot body, so with generation term here, so this is here total you have here conduction fluxes in all three di directions plus energy generation per unit volume would be rate of accumulation of energy within the material so if you are talking about the steady state heat transfer so del t upon del t would be equal to zero moreover we don't have any generation of energy within this fin so the, this e dot generation is also equal to zero so in that case our governing equation would be this much only now what boundary conditions we have so boundary condition first at z equal to 0 t e equal to t w so the temperature of the fin would be the temperature which is maintained at the wall at z equal to l q z equal to minus k dt upon dz equal to 0 this is a conduction flux so the, this is insulation boundary conditions so no flux at insulation point now x equal to plus minus b so you have a conduction flux would be balanced by convective flux which is h a delta t at x equal to 0 that is at the center of the fin del t upon del x would be equal to 0 this is called thermosymmetry boundary conditions or you can have this side you have the highest temperature of the fin so the those two conditions can give you this particular thing now at y equal to plus minus w y2 so either you have uh, uh, either of the sides then you have the conduction flux at uh, in y directions at the surfaces would be equal to s t minus t a now at y equal to 0 again at the center so del t upon del y would be equal to 0 this is again the thermosymmetry boundary conditions now if we want to calculate that uh, average temperature of the fin so if we have the temperature uh, in x y z directions and if we integrate it along the area and then divided by per unit area would give you the average temperature this is general expression just to find the average temperature 
now if you use that under steady state operations which we have there so you have here this is your uh, conduction flux so the del square t upon del x square you are integrating with area and then you are dividing by total area so you get average temperature in this side so you have this one now again for in y directions you have this one so this is uh, conduction flux in y directions now this is conduction flux in z directions so if you now arrange these equations so here you will say that all integrations here to minus b to b or minus w by 2 so these are the symmetric problem so this the limit of integration can be changed from 0 to b by putting a factor 2 here and 0 to w by 2 by putting a factor 2 here so in that case you will end up with here this 2k upon bw 0 to b 0 to w by 2 del square t upon del x square dx dy plus 2k upon bw 0 to b 0 to w by 2 del square t upon del by square dx dy plus k del square upon del z square this t would also come here and then you have 1 upon 2 2b into w 0 to b and minus uh, w by 2 to w by 2 t dt dx into dy now if we arrange this we will get this equation by integrating it this is 0 to b dy this is del t upon del y 0 to w by 2 dx and this is k d square t upon dz square so because uh, this dz is not the function of dx and dy so this will completely will come out from the integration sign here now we can substitute uh, this condition here this is conduction flux so this can be uh, means given by convective flux so this you have this one that uh, k dt upon dx is equal to minus as tb minus ta into dy the same thing here this would be your k dt upon dy so this will be again can calculated by convective flux in direction y that is minus h tw by 2 minus ta into dx now this term is as it is k d square t upon dz square equal to 0 now we are considering that the temperature at any position z is same in all directions of the fin so this means that you take a section there so at a particular section either you calculate on top or bottom or left and right fin is being considered at a uniform temperature therefore tb is equal to the average temperature t bar and tw by 2 is also considered average temperature t bar now by putting these the limitations here so this can be changed then this equation can be changed in this particular format that is minus 2 h upon bw t bar minus t ta w by 2 minus 2 h upon bw t bar minus ta into b plus k d square t bar upon dz square equal to 0 now from here we can get the expression of d square t upon dz square would be this one as t minus t a upon k inside bracket 1 upon b plus 2 upon w now this can be rewritten as into this particular format now if we say the heat loss from a differential surface so if you say the differential length dz so for that case the heat loss from that this is uh, convective flux h t t bar minus t a this is the average temperature at this particular segment multiplied by area so this particular segment will loss the heat from this surface 
and from this this surface and this top and bottom one. So therefore, 2b into d uh, dz would be actually uh, this surface, which is in direction z. Next is actually w into dz, which uh, this w into dz is this word top and bottom one multiplied by 2. So by adding that you will get total area. So this is the heat loss from differential surface. Now heat loss per unit volume just divided by the volume here. So this is volume. Now if uh, W is uh, uh, very large as compared to B, so this particular 2B plus W can be uh, can be approximated as W only. So therefore we will get expression here d square t upon dz square is equal to h t minus t a upon k 2 w dz upon 2 v w dz now from here we got the expression for d square t upon dz square is h t minus t a upon b k now from here we have these are the boundary condition that T bar equal to T W at Z equal to 0 that is at base of the fin. Now this is actually the conduction flux boundary condition DT upon DZ equal to 0 at Z equal to L which is insulation boundary condition. Now we are taking here non-dimensional non temperature theta that is T A T bar minus T A upon T W minus T A. So T W is the highest temperature. Now non-dimensional uh, Z or distance would be equal to Z upon L. Now by substituting these into this equation we will end up with this one the T W minus T A upon L square d square theta upon dz square equal to h theta tw minus ta upon bk now this is our actually non-dimensionalized equation need to be solved so d square theta upon d zeta square equal to hl square upon bk into theta now here this HL square upon PK is being considered as an square and now in that case our equation becomes this D square theta upon D zeta square equal to N square theta. Now we have non slide boundary condition theta equal to 1 at uh, zeta equal to 0 and D theta upon D zeta equal to 0 at zeta equal to 1. So these are this is from boundary condition one, this is from boundary condition two in non diverse form. Now this uh, the equation which we got uh, can be given by this solution that theta equal to c1 e to the power minus n zeta plus c2 e to the power n zeta here. Now from boundary condition one, you can substitute here boundary condition one. Uh, boundary condition 1 theta equal to 1 at zeta equal to 0 so we can substitute here we will get this equation now from boundary condition 2 by differentiating this we will get theta equal to 0 d theta equal to 0 so we have minus n zeta c1 n e to the power minus n plus c2 n e n and zeta actually so from here we can solve this and finally we will end up here with this equation that c1 equal to e to the power n upon e to the power n plus e to the power minus n and then c2 equal to e to the power minus n upon e to the power n minus e to the power minus n now this can be substituted in equation of theta so finally your theta equal to e to the power n 1 minus zeta upon e to the power n plus e to the power minus n plus e to the power minus n 1 minus zeta plus upon 
e to the power n plus e to the power minus n. Now we can take actually LCM of this. So in that case we will end up of this one that theta equal to cos hyperbolic n 1 minus zeta upon cos hyperbolic n. Now heat removed by the fin so Q fin would be 0 to L H T bar minus T A multiplied by area of heat loss uh, 2 2V plus W into Tz. Now heat removed by ideal fin so ideal fin will have the actual temperature at the wall here so in the ideal fin here the only change here this as Tw minus Ta uh, multiplied by 2 bracket 2W plus 2V plus W into Tz now we can find effectiveness of the fin would be equal to actual heat transfer upon uh, maximum heat transfer by the ideal fin so in that case qf upon qf max so we can substitute the expression of qf and qf max so in that case you have qf is t bar minus t a dz h2 bracket 2b plus w then 0 to l t w minus t a dz h2 2b plus w now this term will get cancelled from here this would get uh, T bar minus T A upon T W minus T A is non dimensional temperature. So this we can write in terms of non dimensionalized parameters. So in that case the theta would become Z and then non dimensional boundary condition at 0 to 1 actually. Now for that we can integrate this so we can substitute the expression of uh, theta. So you have expression of theta then you can integrate it. So with respect to zeta here so you will get cos hyperbolic n into sine hyperbolic h n minus zeta bracket 1 minus n 0 to n. So you substitute here so you will get 1 upon n sine hyperbolic n upon cos hyperbolic n equal to 1 upon n tan hyperbolic n where n square is hl square upon k so this is expression of fin effectiveness the eta equal to 1 upon n tan hyperbolic n now the, the effectiveness as n tends to infinity eta tends to 0 as n tends to 0 eta tends to 1 so we can calculate the actually the effectiveness of n while putting the correct value of n and n would be calculated from here hl square upon kb so here you have the parameters here convective heat transfer coefficient the length of the fin conductivity of the material and the thickness of the fin so these are uh, four parameters which are controlling your the effectiveness of the Fin. Suppose you have only materials need to be changed because surrounding conditions we cannot change. Sometimes we cannot also change the length, the size due to constraint of the area. So we have only two choices here the conductivity of the material. So we can put actually high conductive material to have the best effectiveness of the fin. So thank you for that the references from there, the transport phenomena by word is the word and the light foot. So in case of uh, doubt and suggestions you can drop your comments. Thank you very much.